So are we seeing what skeptics such as myself thought would happen? And that is that the five right-wing justices on the high court would put politics ahead of the best interests of the nation and jeopardize health insurance access for tens of millions of Americans? Joining me now to discuss this is Richard Fowler, Democratic strategist, and John Manuelian, a defense attorney and libertarian. Richard, uh, John, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Sam. Yes, Thank you. you. John, let's start with you. So uh, it looks like uh, there's a likelihood that the individual mandate might get struck down uh, based on the reports that are coming out today. There are something like 53 million Americans who don't have health insurance. And if you're not going to give them subsidies to go get health insurance, and a lot of those people, sure, are young people who don't want it, but there's a considerable amount of people who do want it but are sick or can't afford it. If we're not going to give them subsidies to go get it on their own and require insurance companies to, to accept them, and we're not going to do a single-payer national health care plan, what do we do about this problem? Well, that's, a, that's a, a budget issue. That's not a constitutional issue. This, this Obamacare, or I should say the Affordability Act, uh, is strictly based on the Commerce Clause, specifically Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3. And the issue before the court and the Supreme Court is, does the federal government have broad powers under the Commerce Clause to force this law upon people? Remember, if this law is passed, if I don't want a, any part of this law, I get penalized. Now, whether you call that a tax or a penalty, the government is actually reaching into my pocket and pulling up money because I'm not doing what the government says that I should be doing. And that is violative of the Commerce Clause. Remember, the reason why the Commerce Clause was first enacted in 1776 is because the Union, the states that were just federalized, in other words, under the United States government, they wanted to have free trade between all the states. So in order to avoid the trade barriers, this Commerce Clause is supposed to protect interstate commerce through interstate commerce, which, which means all the states have to uh, act in unity. Now, if you read the Article, 8 section, Article 1, Section 8, it deals with three things. It deals with uh, uh, commerce relating to foreign nations within the states and Indian tribes. That's it. Okay. All this other mumbo-jumbo okay. that you're hearing on the news about uh, rights that need to be given is but all that's, that's not the, complete the, the, poppycock. And, and before, and for, and I'll, Richard, I'll let you jump in here in just a second. In the argument, say the justice even said, if we had a, a national payer system, this wouldn't be an issue. You know, that's an alternative you guys could look at. I'm, a, I'm asking you, and forget about the legal stuff, there's 40,000 Americans who die every year because they don't have access to health insurance in the wealthiest nation on the planet. What do we do about that? Get out of war. Stop, stop this nonsense war around the country. Save your money. Slash the uh, military budget by 50%. Bring our troops home. Use that money to pay for homeless people, to pay for health care. That's what I think should so be done. So you support a national payer system? I do not. I, I support an individual right system where individuals choose what they want to do based on their needs. Right, but we have already established they can't. Richard, I'll let you jump in now. People but, can't pay for their needs on this, right? This but, is, look, is it just this ignoring is the problem? This is pretty simple, Sam. I think uh, what, what John fails to realize is that Social Security and Medicare, which are both where the government takes money out of your pockets even though you don't want them to, are just as, it's, are all justified under the Commerce Clause. If, we, if, if the courts tonight or in the, couple, in the next coming months rule that Obamacare is unconstitutional, that means that, God forbid, that Mitt Romney becomes President of the United States, his health care plan will also be unconstitutional because it requires so it allows you to, to buy across state borders, which is an inter, interstate trade, which is wrong. The end of the day, what it boils down to, Sam, is that everybody is part of the healthcare market. That is where the Commerce Clause come in. You go to the you go to the hospital twice when you're born and when you die. That makes you part of the market. Just that simple. John, isn't this about personal so then responsibility? By your, by your argument, then maybe we should get burial insurance. Well, no, no, no. That, that's that's completely different. I think what we're arguing is that every at every at some point in time in your life, you're part why, of the healthcare why? People market. People die. That's a guarantee. That costs money. Are billions of dollars spent out of other people paying for somebody else's burial insurance, like health health insurance is? Isn't this about personal responsibility? All of us are going to go into the healthcare system at some point, and there are going to be people who and don't we're going to die at some point too. I know, but isn't right. this isn't this about billions of dollars? This is a considerable part, portion of our GDP, our economy, that we're trying to address. This is bankrupting our nation, our current health care system. Well, what, then if what that's we the do case, you should be forcing who, people to eat healthier. That'll save money. Uh, well, I think we tried that. And, um, you know, when Michelle Obama said that she wanted every, all the all American, all American kids to eat better, the Republicans said that, you know, you can't go telling people how to eat. So, I mean, at the end of the day, what it boils yeah, down to... No, hold on, let me, fin let me finish, let me finish yeah. John. At the end of the day, what it boils down to, Sam, is pretty simple. What it, when it comes to the end, it has nothing to do with burial insurance, because burial insurance is not, is not a bill or a tab that's paid for by the American people. But when you go to the hospital and you can't afford the bill, the American people front the money 
for you. So regardless of what happens, the American taxpayers are paying for uninsured workers. And therefore, if we can allow, if we, in the system that under the, under the exchange system that the president's created, it will do two things. One, if you already have insurance, you're already sitting on the bus. Additionally, if you don't have insurance and you're under, the, and, and you, and you're under a certain ceiling, you, the government would help you provide that insurance for you. If you don't have insurance and you're above that ceiling, then you should pay for insurance because when you go to the hospital and don't have insurance, somebody has to pay the bill. John, we have 30 seconds left. I'll give you the last word on that. It's not granted in the federal government. This is all great. I, I, I mean, I'm all for this. As an individual, I want to see people have health care. I want to see people have food. But here's the bottom line. It's not authorized in the Commerce Clause. And that's well, the bottom Social line. Social Security and Medicare is authorized in the Commerce Clause. This should be as well. It's just that simple. And it shouldn't be. It was wrong. That was a case, Wickard versus Filburn, 1842. And that's why, that's, why, that's, why, well, that's why under the Reagan administration and under all the Republican administrations since Social Security and Medicare, they have not, they have not protested that. All right. We're fresh out well, of time. Hopefully now it'll get changed. Now, on, it'll, hopefully John. now it'll be repaired. All right, we're fresh out of time. John, Richard, I think you made a good point there. So I think our nation's better off with Social Security and Medicare, even though it was a precedent sent to make those, uh, uh, set to make those things, uh, I guess, quote-unquote, constitutional. <laughs> Richard, John, thanks, thanks for having a lot. Me, Sam. Yeah.